How's it going everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So in this video, we're literally talking about scaling your preps, your bug out bag, your get home bag, your kits in general. How do you scale them legitimately for what you need instead of just throwing everything in this kit and it weighs 150 pounds and you're like, I'm ready for everything. I'm like, that's awesome, but that 150 pound kit isn't going to work out in different scenarios. Now, could it, but you're going to be extremely like slow. You're not going to be able to traverse very quickly and other stuff, you know, involving logistics. So with that, I'm going to talk about what do I mean? So scaling your bags is being ready for everything event, but having weight, timeliness, you know, and effectiveness all ruled into one to be ready for everything. So I kind of set up everything here on the whiteboard. This is just kind of my general opinion of I just kind of made this and I've been using it for several years and figured y'all might get some ideas off of how I incorporate all my kits to literally mesh together into one solid kit that is usable. So let's get into situations that could possibly occur and what do I mean by them? How do I break them up? So the first one is a personal incident, some type of incident that only affects you in a way, just me. Hey, car broke down on the side of the road. Cool. That just affects me. It doesn't affect anybody else. It doesn't affect the drivers on the road, you know, regionally or just locally. It's just, Hey, you're in that scenario. Bummer. How do you get out of it? And for example, if that occurs, I'm not going to get on my Minuteman kit and night vision and get all kitted up and who are ready to roll just to walk, you know, a half mile to get gas, you know, and then get, get it, come back and then drive away and be on my way. It's pointless. It's unnecessary. I wouldn't even put on my full bag and be like, we're hiking a half mile. That's dumb. You need to have the capabilities for worst case scenarios, but you don't need to utilize them all the time. So next, after a personal incident comes an isolated incident or a local incident, something locally that is affecting your general area, which could be snowstorm, power loss, maybe civil unrest, riot, stuff like that. It's going to hinder the local authorities around you from assisting you. So you need to be reasonably prepared for a certain amount of time to be ready for that, like a snowstorm or power loss. Next, regional incidents. So regionally, we're stepping it up and going to a whole kind of general region of like power grid failure, hurricane, forest fire, nuclear event, not nuclear weapon event, but like power station or meltdown, that kind of event, more contained sometimes. Most of the time they're more contained. Other stuff we'll talk about here in a second. But with that, Hurricane Katrina was in that, and that's where I kind of put that, is a hurricane. And you saw the logistical nightmare a, a regional issue was, is you know loss of power, loss of life, didn't have enough fuel, food, water, all these things were difficult to get a hold of for weeks, if not months afterwards. Heck, there's even still parts of that general area that are uninhabitable, like literally 15, what, 16, 17 years later. Like, my goodness, it's still going on. But you need to be ready, which I'll discuss how with the packs here in a second. We're just getting the premise out of the way. Next, moving up is national base level or emergency, which you have economic collapse. You have the CW word and the E word, which you can see right there. YouTube doesn't like those, so I can't really say them. But those are, you know, country wise, and those are going to affect way more seriously on the local. Because if we have a big issue down here, it's definitely going to affect all these because you're not bringing in the proper food, water, logistics necessary to sustain yourself. So you're kind of on your own. Lastly is a world-based event. The P word, I'm not allowed to say, the EMP, solar flare, if that would happen, nuclear war, or a world-based conflict affecting your general area. This is pretty much worst case scenario, and it will affect all of the other stuff on top. And with that, I mean, I guess there's one more, which is like total cataclysmic ending, but that's kind of pointless to talk about because it's just ends. So we're not going to talk about the last one. But anyways, those are my general, you know, bracket or outlines for situations that could occur and how the logistical train is going to be affected. So if something happens here, you are definitely going to be affected 
more so and need to have the proper gear for that. So gear wise, what do I mean and what do I have for that? So I have about four kits to roughly get me through all these scenarios. My first kit is my bug out bag or my get home bag. And that would be this kit right here. If you would like to see everything that's in this kit, I'll throw a link in the description box below. I have everything exploded out, you can look at it. But down and dirty, I have 10,000, 10 to 13,000 calories in this bag, which will sustain me for about 10 days. So that would be able to get me through some of these, probably not this one, but personal and isolated local event, my bag, if I'm away from home, this bag can sustain me properly of those events. Now, as we work down and gets more serious, sustainment kit. My sustainment kit has food and sustainment other needs for 30 days. So 30 days worth of food. And this is also man portable. I can tow it behind me. It's in a large duffel and I have it attached to a dolly. So I can literally throw this backpack on and then throw that on. They both have separate items. This is like my main kit that will keep me alive in a way for the tools and stuff. But then this kit has the food and other stuff that I can, if necessary, drag behind me as I'm walking. Next is the food kit. This is a larger kit. I can't really move this at all with just me. I'm going to need, you know, logistics, a vehicle to transport this. But that is six months worth of food. So as you get further down, it's going to take longer and longer for local authorities to help you. So you need to be ready for it. So with that, six months. And then last me, lastly is my homestead kit or the kit that I if necessary, can literally, in a way, start over. It's kind of unrealistic, but if it can be done, if really necessary. Or start over kit, like, you know, planting, gardening, you know, all kinds of other stuff, having all the tools available to sustain my family and my needs into the future. Now, this one is logistically a nightmare, especially to leave your home. I'm going to need a truck and a trailer to take everything with me. And who knows, maybe your truck and trailer isn't available to move because of roadblocks or sanctions or, you know, kind of other stuff or just doesn't work anymore. All those things got to take into mindset. So those are mainly the four kits that I use that can tailor to anything, right? Because if it's a personal incident, I'm not going to go to the homestead kit and be like, hey guys, my car broke down. Let's go set up, set up a homestead on the side of the road. Like <laughs> it's, it's kind of unnecessary. You just got to scale it and be mindset with it. Lastly, uh, or almost lastly, one of the things that I look at it as is the old use of force model, which law enforcement and military used to use. You know, at the bottom it was like no force, then you go verbal, less than lethal, deadly. You climb up and down the ladder or the rungs in a way, ready for what can occur. Now they can swap fairly quickly. In my opinion, this can go to this reasonably quickly, or this can go reverse. So worldly can affect personal very quick. But a personal event probably isn't going to affect anything else. So scaling wise of going up and down. Lastly, for interpreting this or getting the mindset across is METTC. Some of you are familiar with METTC. This is different. I changed it around just because I fit my needs for this environment or this situation. So it's mission, environment, terrain, tactics, time, and contingency. So what do I mean by that? What is the mission that you have to accomplish? For instance, if an EMP goes off and I'm out filming in the mountains and I'm 80 miles away, I'm going to have to walk home and that's going to suck. So my environment, hey, it's cold and snowy out. So I need to have good, you know, clothing available to me. And hey, this is probably a, you know, maybe a regional or larger event. So there'll probably be hostile activities, you know, after probably 72 hours because people are going to start understanding, hey, law enforcement isn't responding anymore. That's awesome to think right? In their mindset, criminal's mindset, that's what they're thinking. So you might have some opposition. Next, your terrain. Mountains, cool. I'm in the mountains. I'm going to the plains. So mountains, plains, and then home, 80 miles. How do I get there? That's tactics. So mountains are pretty good for covering concealment. Moving into the terrain or plains, I use night optic based devices, you know, night vision. Now I have them in a Faraday cage and stuff like that. So you're like, how does that work? Because EMP knocked out all like electronics. Well, I have mine literally in a Faraday cage to protect against that. So I have that afterwards. I'm going to do all my movements at night because one, people normally sleep at night, especially if you have no power. Why is there up? Can you even see at night? No. Or you can go blending. So now blending, I see there's multi-cam here. 
but my regional area where I'm at is extremely prevalent with multi-cam. There's military people all over the place. This is the norm to see everywhere where I am. It's just a normal thing. Now, if you're in a different environment, probably wouldn't be using this, but you gotta tailor this to you and where you are at. Next is time-wise. Do you have a time scale where you wanna be home? That kind of stuff, maps, routes. Cool, mine was 96 hours. Wanna be home in that amount of time. Contingency plan. Do I know anybody around me? If I'm moving that direction, hey, I know somebody's over here. Hey, I know this is over here. Hey, I know a spring is over here to fill up water. Plan your route kind of accordingly for worst case scenarios or worse events while you're dealing with yours. So I pretty much went over everything explaining scaling of your pack. I probably will do another video of showing you literally certain kits that I have laid out that can literally attach to this bag and be ready to go depending on the environment and the scenario. So like if I am trying to get home and I have to go through a, you know, or I get involved in a civil unrest type of thing and there's a lot of hostile activities going on, it's going to determine what type of pack and gear and items I bring with me if I have to get through or can I go around? I can't go around. I'm stuck here. Do I wait? Do I not wait? That kind of stuff. Anyways, another video for another time. If you guys like this kind of stuff and enjoyed some of this or even one thing, if you just learned some one little thing, definitely hit like and subscribe. First off, or lastly, this is just my opinion. This is just me putting stuff together. This is recommendation. This is what I use. I'm not forcing you. I guarantee someone's going to up, be upset about this whole thing and say it's wrong, which is fine. This just works for me. This is what I use. So just, I'm just trying to share with you, hey, this is what I use. It works for me. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, definitely consider uh, PayPal if you want to do a donation. Patreon's great. Behind the scenes stuff, seeing all kinds of stuff. They get a crack at this stuff all before me and get to comment, hey, I suggest this, hey, I suggest that, that kind of stuff. Really more involved with my Patreons than I am, you know, commenting in YouTube because there's so many of you. But if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, links are in the description box below. And like I said, like and subscribe. And other than that, that was pretty much everything about scaling. Until the next video, hope you all have a great day.